I first came to United States, I was about 12 and a half years old uh, in middle school. Um, I started middle school here. Uh, but when I get off plane in San Francisco uh, and into Seattle, um, I see skyscrapers. And back where I came from, it's like one story. The tallest building I see is two story. But now all of a sudden there's like, you know, 20 story tall. It's like, wow, you know, this is so cool. You know, who who did, who can, you know, those people that can design and build those, you know, how do they do it? My dad, he is an architect too. He, he worked for a company, architectural firm. And then later he, he opened up his own company. And then I see this blueprint, because his drawings, the blueprints and stuff. So I got exposed to um, how it works. And but I also um, appreciate and just amazed on what human being, you know, um, can do. And my dad shared a story. He says, you know, Henry, if you look at a building, I said, what's the difference between architectural and engineering? Are you guys the same same trades? I know it's architect. If you look at a building, think that as the skin of the building, the outside, the beauty, that's architecture. And but engineers, you really make sure that you design strong bones, right? The bone to hold up the building. So you need to see how thick, how strong a bone is. But architects, we work with you guys. That's how the um the building gets designed and built. And so I'm not as statistic as my dad. <laughs> he he can visualize things and he can make things pretty. But I'm more like a mathematic person, math and physics, you know, calculation and stuff. That's kind of my strength. And that's how I got into the civil engineering career. I get to uh, design, construct, and build stuff, and maintain and operate stuff that um, actually performs a function that essential function that people need to use. Drinking water, uh, for example, um, when you tap, open your tap, the water just doesn't magically just appear. Um, all the behind the scene um, work and effort required to ensure that when someone turns on the tap water, um, it's drinkable, fresh, clean. Um, so that's that's um, happiness to me. Um, it's it's not really um, in the spotlight kind of job, um, but to see that my job, the the end product and the end outcome, of my job is people actually enjoy enjoy the stuff. So um, that part of job I, I really like. So on the pros, um, solving complex infrastructure problems, um, whether things are not working as we originally intended, or things fail, and or we need to do you know um, things the design's bad. Um, so solving those complex infrastructure problems that's great. Um, also diversity of work activities. We are really all small organization, and as such. We need to become jack of all trades, if you will. We don't have a lot of support staff. We can just hand it off and be specializing area and just rely on uh, other teammates to carry on other activities. Um, so we we had to do a lot of different um, different things. Um, the third thirty is working in a team environment and building relationships with your team member and also. Um, our partners, our supplier, contractors, consultants. Uh, it's just very, very important as a civil engineer because we maintain, operate, design, build infrastructures. No one person can do it all. And so you, you, your success is relying on your other team members uh, doing their part. Uh, and together, um, it makes it extremely strong um, uh, organization and company. Uh, the lastly is, um, like I said earlier, the joy of seeing things get built and being put to use, um, and people using it, enjoying it. <laughs> I was a uh, uh, in before the water business. I was in the transportation. Um, I was a, a street light 
and street lighting design engineer and be able to design uh, street lights along West Seattle, Center Boulevard, build a Center Boulevard, planting trees and street lights and make people driving along the Harbor Avenue Southwest or California at night safely in a bright lighted situation, people enjoying it, you know, it's just really satisfying. So. I think, you know, um, always be curious. I mean, this is just general things in life, right? Whether it's this career or another career, uh, no matter what field you do, um, just be curious and observant. Um, uh, listen, uh, be curious, observant, uh, that's one. Secondly, you know, if you're good at math, I think the um what what was the word for cross skilling meaning transferable skill, um if you you put a good math person, you can put it adapt to, if you have a career in one one area and you want to switch over to a different career, uh it's it's not all the case but, it, you have a higher chance of success if you're strong in math, uh, and science, um because you can you can do many different jobs. Um, and you, 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 you have that core skill. So so I would say, yeah, study uh, math and science. I know that subject nowadays, you know, less and less people was interested in that area, especially in this country. Uh, <laughs> everybody goes to, you know, gaming, software and all that kind of stuff. But natural life science, that's kind of important too. Physics, chemistry, um, you don't need to be an expert in here, but just keep it up. You know, I, I will encourage you to um, spend some effort and time, especially in high school, because uh, you need to build a foundation. Um, and so when you go um, study secondary school, you build a strong foundation. And when you are curious, it's a, a sign that you're willing to learn in, in self-improvement. Self improvement is is a lifelong um, try it that I, I, to this day I'm still learning <laughs> I'm still curious because the the second you start being curious you, the second you stop learning um, because you know it it's not that you know it all you don't know but you don't care 